what's up youtube this is your boy jay ronin with um a deck profile on a deck that i like a lot it's really fun and i haven't seen anybody make a deck profile with these two art types involved and that's hakai or unchained and layer of darkness so this is my unchained layer or layer of unchained however you want to call it um hakai layer is usually what i call it because it sounds way better in the Japanese form, the Hakai Shin, than the on-chain souls and all that stuff. So, first off, obviously we got token cards, right? Because the field spell for Layer of Darkness generates tokens, which we usually use to tribute for some of the virus cards that we run. And we have this rocky token because we are running um, Nimbiru some of the times. I actually cited it. Uh, it sometimes I've seen a lot of decks struggle. Uh, they use Nimbiru, and then they end up tributing a lot of your opponent's monsters. But then you end up giving your opponent a, a, a Nimbiru token with like ten thousand attack and seven thousand defense. And I've seen some uh, decks struggle to get rid of those tokens. And with this deck, it's obviously very easy because the whole theme about it is just tribute your opponent's stuff to further your plays. And Layer of Darkness does it. But then the Unchained Monsters also do it. So you're tributing just the living crap out of everything they have. And, and that creates a lot of advantage. So the first thing that we are going to run is going to be our layer and our layer package. So we are running Triple Lilith. Uh, this card is one of the best cards in the deck. I mean... It's the one that gets everything rolling. If you uh, don't know what this already does, uh, you contribute a monster uh, you control, or if you have Layer of Darkness on the field, you tribute one of your opponent's monsters. It is a quick effect. You dig through your deck, you get three normal traps, your opponent selects one of those, and that gets set. So it works very well because you can dig through your deck and get your unchained traps set into your field, and then activate them from there, pop them from there. It depends. If you have layer of darkness on the field you don't have to tribute it you could just wait for your opponent's turn and then tribute one of their monsters instead and um we'll start getting some some value off of that and then you know tributing one of your opponent's monsters is a quick effect during their turn to get yourself a trap that, that's, that's pretty damn great uh we run three of the arima the wicked wharton three doggos this is a little dog because this dog has this deck has a bigger dog uh, this card is also great. You can discard it and then uh, get a layer of darkness uh, spell from your deck to your hand and then just activate it. Or you can tribute a monster you control or if you have layer of darkness, one of your opponent's monsters, to either draw a card or draw a monster with 3,000 attack, 1,000 defense, which would be uh, Darkest Diabolos, which we run one copy. Uh, this whole theme about this deck, it's kind of just to crush your opponent's soul. I, I rarely end a duel with this deck because they usually end up just scooping, you know? Uh, they don't even want to go through the whole thing because they summon a monster, you use this to trigger that. They summon another monster, you use this other thing to trigger that. And it just, you know, it crushes their spirit, man. So, it's it's a, we dial it back to only one Diabolos just in case we got something big that we need to run over. You could just summon that, tribute itself, or tribute another monster. Uh, Layer of Darkness gives you a token at the end phase, uh, depending on the number of the monsters you tribute it. So if you tribute uh, this monster, you'll get a token at the end of the turn. So you could use uh, the tribute to to tribute to look for Diabolos if you need to get over something bigger. You know, it's a 3,000 body. It cannot be tributed, so your opponent cannot kaiju it. You can't do anything about it. They have to run in battle. Obviously, we run triple layer of darkness this is the whole uh well half of it this is half of the theme of the deck it's about tributing your opponent's stuff um it, it allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters as if it was your own uh once per turn and then at the end of the turn you get tokens equal to the number of monsters that were tributed that turn the turn player gets this so if you have lilith on the field and you end your turn and your opponent summons a monster and you use let it to tribute that monster your opponent will get the token at the end of the turn because the turn player is the one that gets the token generated by layer of darkness but 
that's not always a bad thing because if you're going up against an opponent that has a bunch of high attack monsters and no low attack monsters, we do run some of the crush card viruses that require monsters with 1000 attack, which the token that this card generates is. So even if your opponent doesn't have any 1000 attack monsters on their deck, they will get the token if you tribute something during their turn. And then you can use that token that you gave them to activate your traps using Layer of Darkness by tributing their stuff. We run one uh, Terraforming because it's at one, and we run one Metaverse because it's at one. These work out very well, and they're also very nice baits because because these are these two cards are one. You know they're pretty. But now the cards themselves are not busted. But a lot of the spell cards that they search, field spells that they search, are pretty busted. So a lot of times, even if I already have a layer of darkness in my hand, or if I have the dog in my hand, if I have layer of darkness in my hand, I'll still activate terraforming. If they negate it then that's fine because I get a second copy. If I activate the copy and they, they pop it, I have another one for the next turn. But most of the time, if they have a negate, they will use it against terraforming. So if they use the negate and they only have one spell negate and then one monster negate and all that, what have you, uh, if they use the one spell negate they had, then they have nothing for layer of darkness. And the same thing goes with metaverse. If they have like a negate everything type of card, they know uh, metaverse is gonna mean trouble for them so they'll negate it and then you can work with that you know at least bait the negate see if it doesn't go true it's one of those cards that you know they're gonna try to negate if they can't now for the Hakai or the unchained uh, side of the deck we run three of the blue boys and this is this is pretty good if you know what it does if you don't know what it does as a quick effect you can target one card you control destroy it also you can add special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except fiend monsters which is fine because everything in this deck is fiend if this card is on the field in the field is destroyed by a card effect it'll it'll float uh you can summon any unchained monster from your deck except another copy of itself so this is one of the cards that you summon it and then you can pop one card on your side of the field uh, which obviously would be one of the unchained traps or spells and then I will get you the other unchained monsters. It's also a level 3 which is really important it will come in handy later on the extra deck. And then we run 3 of the flamey boy or the red boy uh, which uh, if this one what it does is that you can target one card you control and uh, destroy it to special summon itself. So. If you have the blue boy, you can set the blue boy and then activate this, pop it, special summon this, and because the blue boy was destroyed, it'll float into another unchained, which will be usually the big dog. Or you could pop one of your set spells and traps. If there are unchained spells and traps, it'll float into the big dog, which we also run three of. I've seen some builds run too because it is true that you can get it back. This deck has a pretty nice recursion. But at the same time, you want to see this monster and this, this card as, as much as possible. Uh, what this does is, this card gains attack equal to 300 times the number of unchained cards in your graveyard. And once per turn during your turn, you can target one of your opponent's monster and use it as link material for a dark link monster. Obviously, it will be a dark... I mean, it depends. You can tribute uh, your opponent's link monsters and if they have a link to... Using this, you could go into a link three. If they have a link three with this, you can go into a link four. As long as it requires two monsters, because you can only use this and the monster that you're targeting to link summon, uh, which is really great. And I mean, if you have something like Topologic, Topologic requires two plus monsters. So if they have a link three, you could just get this, target their link three monster, and go directly into Topologic with that. So that's that's pretty that's pretty sweet. Usually they'll have one monster if they don't have a link then you'll go into the link to unchained monster Which is also pretty good. We run three of the on wailing of the unchained souls I've seen some builds run only two of them. I don't know why you would uh, What this card does is if you link summon an unchained link monster You can target with one card on the field and destroy it if this set card on the field is destroyed It floats into an unchained monster from your deck so the the effect of pop is really really good uh, and and also obviously if you set it and they twin twister it or they pop it then it floats into one of the other monsters if um 
if anything, if you want to try to block attacks, you could just chain one unchain after the other. You could just set this and pass, I guess. If they pop it, special summon the blue boy. If they attack it or they pop it, special summon the red boy. If they attack it or they pop it, special summon the dog and put it in defense. The dog has 3,000 defense, so it works out really, really well. I run two of the Abomination Prison. Um, I don't know. I might run three. This is the Searcher. Uh, so it it searches any unchained monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, I usually find myself with a lot of them in my hand, so that's why I kind of dial it back. Uh, I usually, I mean, as long as you get one of them, you can get whichever of them. So it's not like if you want to see the dog, see the blue boy or the red boy, it's basically seeing the, the dog because it's so easy to pop them and then they'll float into the dog and it, it won't go to your hand. They'll actually special summon it. So I like that better than searching the dog and then having this level 8 monster in my hand that I sometimes can't special summon. So I'd rather just get the blue boy or the red boy, pop it and then summon the dog directly and then start link climbing from there. Uh, but it's also a good card. So it also floats, right? If you set it and they pop it, it floats into any of your chain monsters. And then we also run three of the Abominable Chamber of Unchained. Uh, this is kind of like a back to the front Call of the Hunted type of thing. You can special summon one Unchained monster from your hand or graveyard. And then if this set trap is destroyed, then it floats into an Unchained monster from your deck. The same thing as all the other Unchains. And then you have three copies of Escape of the Unchained. Uh, and what this does is you can target one on-chain monster you control in one card on the field, destroy both. And if this said card is destroyed, then it flows into an on-chain monster from your deck as well. So obviously all of the on-chain cards float. So if you activate this to destroy one of your set, you know, if you have Wailing set, activate this, pop Wailing, pop one of your opponent's monsters. Wailing would float into another on-chain monster. So that's how you start getting your stuff rolling. Now... On top of that, I run this other package that works with obviously um, either this or the layer side. Uh, we're going to be running one card crush virus, and this requires a dark monster with 1000 attack to be tributed, which uh, we don't have any. And if your opponent doesn't have any, it doesn't really matter because if you tribute a token with Lilith during their turn, at the end of the turn, they'll get a token. Or if you tribute a monster with Lilith during their turn, they will get a token at the end of the turn, and the token has a thousand attack. So you could activate this card, tribute the token that you gave them, and then resolve the card crush virus. We run three Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Uh, this is the GOAT. If you have any problems with all these Floodgate decks, uh, this is the response from this deck because this will tribute. A monster with 2500 attack or more sometimes it might be yours sometimes it might be theirs and then you can select either all traps or all spells and your opponent has to get rid of whatever type of card that you uh, pick and every card that they draw for the next three turns if it's the declared card they gotta dump it in the graveyard so if you're running against uh, if somebody's playing that bullshit mystic mind thinking oh you're not gonna be able to use card effects just set this whenever you get a big monster or time it correctly. Um, tribute your monster, get rid of all their spells, and then you know take it from there. If they have big monsters, uh, if you're playing against something like Dark Magician, tribute their Dark Magician, call out uh, spells and get rid of all the spells, get rid of all their circles, navigations, and what have you. Uh, so this is really, really great. And obviously it, it works well with the tributing mechanic. Uh, we run... Two call by the graves because fuck hand traps and we also run one Raigeki and the reason why we run Raigeki is it's a bait magnet so it's one of those cards that I believe should be on everybody's deck it's one card I don't know why people wouldn't run it you get so much value out of it that's the reason why it's at one if they see this you know your opponent is gonna negate it if they can't and if they can't they're gonna lose all their monsters so to me it's a win-win situation the same thing goes with monster reborn a lot of times i'll activate monster reborn i don't want to bring anything back i just want to bait them out and have them negate this and use their negate so that i can activate layer of darkness and then start tributing the crap out of their monsters so this is also a good card as a win-win situation 
if they have a negate they will use it against this if they don't you're going to get a free monster either from your graveyard or theirs so that's something that always works out we run also one tour guide it's a level three it searches any other level three fiend which lilith is and if you special summon lilith using tour guide it won't have its effect but it will have its 2000 attack and you can search any of the blue boys now if you search the red boy you won't be able to pop a card if you search the blue boy either but when they die if they get popped they will float into the dog and also we run one lava golem which is also a fiend monster because the theme again about this deck is just tribute 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 if your opponent has a a board you know those break my boys type of things well here you go get rid of two monsters and then let's get the dog tribute another one let's get the other dog tribute another one and at that point they just end up quitting because your break my board just got broken and they don't have anything else uh, other things that we run on this deck it's dark spirit of banishment this is really really good uh, what this card does is if your opponent attacks uh, if your opponent monster attacks at the start of the damage step you can send this card to from the hand or field to the graveyard then target one level eight monster in your graveyard to special summon it but it has its effects negated which is perfectly fine because you'll get the dog the dog is a level eight fiend with 3000 defense and then when a level eight fiend monster dies you get to get this from your graveyard back to your hand it just keeps on that endless loop uh, so that works out pretty well and last but certainly not least triple super polymerization the fact that this card is a three it's bonkers and that's the reason why rogue decks have a fighting chance because in this case um you can't respond to super poly if you don't know what super poly does uh you, you should because you're playing this game this is one of the best cards in the game so if you don't know what it does you can discard one card fusion someone one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters on either side of the field as fusion materials and neither player can activate cards or effects in response so if your if your opponent has you know like i said one of those five monsters break my boy type of thing will activate super poly that's two or three that you can get rid of i'll show you how and if you have something like lava golem in your hand well that's another two so i just got rid of either all of your five monsters or four of your five monsters and it has been you know i haven't even started i haven't even normal summoned or anything like that so that's the deck and Let's go into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we are running one Super Quantum Mech Bees Grand Pulse. And the reason why we run this is one has a big booty, two it negates, three it's a rank three. We run a lot of uh, level three monsters. We also run one number 30 Acid Golem of Destruction. And the reason why we run this is because this is a rank 3, 3000 attack, 3000 defense, which is easy to make on this deck. And it's just uh, for two reasons. If you have a big monster that you need to get over, you go into this card. If you're being locked down, if you have something like Mystic Mine on the field, or you have something, you know, these traps that can, that prevents you from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And your opponent has all these low attack monsters and you don't have anything to sacrifice for your eradicator virus you could just get two level threes going to this tribute this for the eradicator virus trap and then get rid of whatever it's giving you trouble you know traps spells what have you uh if, at the end of the turn at the standby phase you get a dis uh, detach one material if you don't you start taking damage but usually what i do is if it's a big body i just keep it uh keep attacking when it runs out of the, uh when it runs out of materials i just tribute it for one of the either for Lilith to search another trap, for the little dog to draw, or for Eradicator to get rid of all my opponent's uh, spells or traps. We run Triple Unchain Soul of Rage, which is the Link 2. Uh, what this card does is during your opponent's main phase, it doesn't matter if it's main phase 1 or main phase 2, as long as it's the main phase, you can, tribute, uh, you can target one monster your opponent controls and use that and this card to Link Summon a Dark link monster it doesn't have to be a fiend it just has to be a dark link monster so again if you have this and they go into a link to you know if you're going against uh solomon great and they go into sunlight wolf you could target the sunlight wolf and use that to end this to go into a link four which would be something like topologic bomber or the actual unchained link four monster so whatever you need to we run also a triple unchained soul of anguish 
And what this does is this, this also targets a monster your opponent controls and tributes it so you can summon a link, a dark link monster, but this works during your turn. So the way this works is you summon a dog, you use one of your opponent's monsters, go into the link two, you end your turn. Whenever they start either normal summoning, special summoning, you target it with the dog, you take it, you go into the link three, link to the link three, they usually don't have anything else to do. So you pass, and then the next turn, you tribute another monster your opponent controls to go into the link four, which we run three copies of as well. Uh, this is Unchained Abomination. And what this card does is, if a card on the field is destroyed, which the effect of uh, Wailing of the Unchained comes in handy at this point, uh, you can target uh, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. When an opponent's monster is destroyed by battle, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. And then during the end phase, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Uh, so it pops, 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 pops. You run over a monster, destroy another one. You, if you summon this when you had Wailing, pop another one. Uh, we also run a Topologic Bomber Dragon because it's a Darkling monster that requires two monsters. So, like I said, if you have the Link 3, you could either... Actually, as long as you can make uh, a Link 4 with two monsters, it doesn't really matter how. You could go into Topologic and all of the Unchained monsters float. So, it doesn't really matter at one point. You could pop one, summon another one to one of the points the Topologic uh, points to and then clear your opponent's field. Uh, there's many many ways that you could go into this It's perfectly great and also since we're running <clears throat> three super polys we should have three super poly targets right so we have mud dragon of the swamp which requires uh, two monsters with the same attribute but different types and this is very easy to make because layer of darkness makes everything dark so there you go you have two monsters with the same attribute so as long as they're different types then you can go into this and get rid of two of your opponent's monsters or you can go into everybody's favorite super poly target which is starving venom fusion dragon uh this card is great uh when it summon targets a monster in the field gains its effect and then when they get rid of it it pops it clears the field right so this takes two dark monsters and like i said um layer of darkness makes everything dark so even if you're going against a deck that doesn't have dark monsters on their layer of darkness they will and if you really want to be nasty about it you could go into this Preta plant monster that i'm not even going to attempt to say the name um which is the new one that came out and this requires three dark monsters so if your opponent is kind of like comboing off and has three monsters on the field layer of darkness makes everything dark you could just Flip Super Poly, get rid of three of their monsters. I don't know what deck can still make a good play after losing three monsters. Because, you know, I mean, I know there's decks we'd have that have a lot of recursion, but this is just one card getting rid of three of your monsters during your turn. We still have things like Lilith. We still have things like our on-chain monsters. We still have things like um, the art traps that are going to tribute their monsters and then continue off with our place. Now, I did mention that we run in Biru, so obviously we have a small uh, set of changes as cards for the side deck. And the only thing that we are citing is, um, at this time, uh, on Ultimate Falcon, because it's it's a great, great, great Waking the Dragon um, target, right? Because, you know, it is unaffected, it's 3,500. A lot of decks can't get over that. Uh, every now and then I'll swap out one of the dogs for Nightmare Unicorn because it is a Link 3 Dark Monster. So if you want to further disrupt your opponent's plays when you have the Link 2 Monster, which targets an opponent's monster during their main phase, you can target your opponent's monster and you already get rid of one of them to Link into a Dark Link Monster, which would be Unicorn. And at this point you can use Unicorn to bounce one of their cards. So right there is two disruptions um that, that works out pretty well we run two waking the dragons and the reason why we run two waking the dragons it's for their second games for the most part it depends how the game progresses because a lot of times they'll see oh well those are um they'll think that you have those uh eradicator viruses set and they'll try to either pop it but there's always the possibility that you don't have that you have awaken the dragon or you have one of your Hakai, Unchained, Trap cards, Spell cards, and if they pop it, 
then they're gonna lose and if they don't pop it then they're gonna lose because then you get to activate them whenever you want and if they do pop it then they're gonna float into into unchained monsters so for them uh playing with your back row it's it's iffy because it's a lose lose situation for them if they pop it you know you're gonna get value out of it and if they don't you're gonna get value out of it either way so we also run two zero day blasters if you don't know what this does this actually came on if i believe the rocket um structure deck and you contribute one dark link monster then target cards on the field equal to its link rating and destroy them so one of the plays that we had this uh, this guy was going into his uh typical you know comboing stuff and he had a topologic bomber and i targeted that so right there with layer of darkness on the field i contribute your link four and then pop four cards from your field so it's the monster plus the four that's five cards with this one little trap and obviously layer of darkness but you know we're not counting that because that's always on the field in our case so um, it works out really really great uh, i don't know how good this is going to become master rule five because obviously links are not necessary anymore so that's why i kind of cited it out at my locals everybody's crazy about that and they're testing their decks in master rule five so for the most part we're playing master rule five already and obviously um uh, everybody's favorite rocky boy we have three in beers and if you go second you may not have what you need to but it's always nice to cite nimbiru and obviously they start going off and you know you give them this Nim this nimbiru token and a lot of times i see a lot of people rest at ease because they're getting this token that has like 7,000, 8,000 defense and they can think of, well, at least I'm safe behind this big body. And then you come off with your little Lilith and then you tribute that big token with 10,000 attack and 8,000 defense for one of your traps. So it's an easy way to get over that thing. It doesn't have an effect or anything like that. You get rid of, you know, all the combo pieces and then they start setting stuff down you search for your eradicators if they attempt to attempt if they attempt to build their monsters back up you use eradicator to tribute one of their monsters and get rid of their back row so that's it hopefully you guys like it let me know what you think in the comment section below let me know what weird build you got going on and let me know if you have any suggestions as to what can we add remove to make this uh, deck a little bit better i like it a lot like i said for the most part when i play at my locals you know the disruption is so great that a lot of times they just end up scooping um which is kind of like a nice thing you know it's like well okay you know you crush somebody's soul they don't want to play anymore and um yeah that's what it is so let me know what you think thank you have a good one see you next